So, this one didn't happen in Kentucky, uh, but it, it still fits. Um, this one happened in Pennsylvania. Now, where it happened, um, there was this old campground. Um, you could tell it was like a, like a youth camp from like the maybe the 30s through the 50s sometime. Uh, the way everything was built and like the the, the picnic tables and the uh, like I guess the dorm rooms or wherever they had the campground like boys rooms and girls rooms like the way the buildings were and everything it just said you know 30s through the 50s sometime that, that uh, World War II era uh, building style um, and <clears throat> It was an older campground um, that was closed down. Um, so even if the the campground was built like in the 30s through the 50s, like that road had been there since like the 1700s, and that particular area was uh, used as a recreational point. Uh, since the 1700s if you follow me um, it just the campground was established in like the 1900s that's all and um, they they had put a huge uh, metal fence about a eighth of a mile maybe a quarter of a mile up the road from the campground so you couldn't actually drive to it now on a rare occasion I forget what kind of festival it was but they would unlock that gate and people would have access to that campground for whatever kind of uh, uh, program or event they they would host and it wouldn't even be every year it was like every three or four years they would do this um, so yes there is this really old recreational area that had this 1900s uh, campground that had pretty much abandoned and locked off since like probably the 50s and it had this urban legend see that that wooden bridge I was talking about that was up there by the the gate they had gated off this road you would it kind of twisted down and around this this outcropping of rock and it made its way down to the uh, to the creek you know and you could tell the road was built before like modern uh, technologies um, the way it kind of hugged the natural lay of the earth and that probably was a very good spot to cross that particular creek uh, back in the 1700s which is how come they put such an effort in the building that bridge across it you know what I mean but pretty much that road was shut off right there where you'd get down to the bridge because they had the park gated off and they had that bridge gated off because they didn't want anybody driving across it it was that old but um, you'd go into that bridge and on that bridge was like a hundred plus years of uh, you know juvenile carvings and tags and you know uh, you know kids man it's, they it's an old wooden bridge you can climb up in the the rafters and there's spray paint everywhere but the spray paints like the newest of the uh, the graffiti styles on that bridge I mean there's hand carved stuff that was probably a hundred two hundred years old you know there was dates of, of couples you know how they put their initials and um, you could tell by how how deep and like how aged certain carvings was and and the date that they used uh like a 22 you know or a 25 or even a 02 or a 99 you know i mean uh but anyway there's all this basically the youth uh have been coming here for hundreds of years to hang out and on this bridge was carved in multiple different um uh, you know it wasn't the same person you could tell they were different people and they were different generations and like the, the bridge told a story that only the youth could tell and it was written in in a very unique way and if you took the time to study that bridge 
<clears throat> why I'm bringing all this up is because we were down there one time. Um, if you go past that bridge, it wraps around and there's this fishing path, more or less, because fishermen go up in there. Uh, even if the campground's closed, you drive down, you park, you hop that little gate, you'd fish the creek, man. And, you know, you just keep walking up the creek, fishing it and fishing it. So there was this well-weathered footpath that was basically, it was up on the bank of the creek and back about, you know, it ranged between just right on the edge of the bank, like six inches from the edge, and it would it would cut in to maybe 15 to 20 feet away from the creek, depending on how rough the terrain was and how the footpath was mitigated through uh, the uh, the land, you know. So that path was more or less guided by ease of access you know and that's how it was it was built is based on the path of least resistance alongside that creek so it didn't have like a set path it varied with the land terrain um so anyway you'd follow that path and that that path would go up in there about a um, a mile maybe a mile and a half where the creek uh ran into another creek it was a really good fishing spot it was like a fork where two creeks came together and and that path would lead you out on like this little kind of finger island that stuck out there around those creeks so it was heavily used um so um we had been back up in there uh fishing and stuff and we would also go up in there just to hang out and you know build a little fire play some guitar you know do what do what kids do man and uh anyway so it was like um me my brother his girlfriend my girlfriend and like i've discussed this with my my girlfriend who who is my wife now and we can't seem to remember exactly who but um there was another couple there we just don't remember who but anyway there was like six of us there maybe even seven if you include another person who uh was like a third wheel um now everybody had packed up stuff and we were heading back to the trucks to get out of there and you know it was about a mile walk and uh, i was the guitar player so i had like the guitar case and all that stuff and i was the last one on the campsite to make sure the fire was out because i was kind of like uh the master woodsman of the group so to say so I made sure the, the camp was all buttoned up and, you know, we were good to go. So I was the last one out and they had, they had walked off. Maybe they left about a minute prior, you know, maybe two minutes prior. Um, and what I did was I had, I had stayed behind, made sure everything was good. Um, I lit a cigarette because I still smoked back then. And I grabbed my guitar cases and I'm walking out this little footpath. Now... This little footpath, um, <clears throat> you know, had been carved out uh, from the years of uh, fishermen walking along this creek, fishing it, um, but it wasn't quite on the creek. It was in some areas, but for the most part, it stayed, you know, 10, 10 to 15 feet away from the creek bank, and it ran parallel with the creek. Uh, just this little footpath, no more than if you put your feet together that's about how wide it was and it had grass growing up on both both sides of it knee high you know but it was a path <clears throat> and um it was you know fall time so it wasn't quite cold out um maybe october-ish uh all the leaves had changed colors you know some of them had fallen down um, it was like sunset, of course, you know, so it was getting dark, you know, by the second almost. And, uh, so I'm walking out, and the first thing I noticed, you know, is, of course, the creek's running, but for the most part, there was, uh, the woods were quiet, you know. There wasn't any insects or any, any kind of calls, birds or whatever, coming from them woods. So I kind of 
I have my heightened senses going. Everybody else had done walked off so far, I couldn't even hear them anymore. It was just basically me in the woods with the creek running. And um, <clears throat> I'm walking along, and you could still see. I mean, it was it was sunset twilight, so you could see maybe 50, 80 feet, you know. And then stuff just started slowly fading into darkness. And <clears throat> next to this creek, um, you had a mix of uh, tree ages. You know, you had a pretty good, healthy underbrush, but you also had some pretty good tall trees too. Um, so I'm walking along the creek, heading out. Uh, I noticed all the woods are kind of quiet, so it slowed me down, and I just I came to a stop. You know, I felt like something's watching me. You know, you just get that feeling. You know. I had had it for maybe five to ten steps prior, but I would gotten to the point where I just, I stopped. And I, I took a draw on my cigarette, you know, and I'm, I'm just kind of taking in everything around me. And you know how if, uh, well, if something stares at you or you stare at something long enough, uh, you're going to look right at it, you know what I mean? Uh, you just you get that feeling and next thing you know you're all your eyes um, find the eyes that are looking at you to give you that feeling so uh, I'm standing there and as I'm exhaling um, you know I, I kind of I'm moving my eyes around feeling it out and just I turn my head to the left and I stare and off to my left um, away from the creek because uh, the creek was on my right right around not even 20 feet maybe 15 feet uh, to my left standing by this tree <clears throat> is this thing and um, there's so th this thing it was already dark don't get me wrong but um, standing by this tree I could see a, uh, a silhouette of a, a large figure um, I couldn't quite make out any details but I could tell there was something standing there and this is the weird part it was like it was already dark but this thing was emitting like a darkness um, I say that because if you if I looked directly at it it was gone but if I like looked a little bit to the right or to the left of it like maybe 10 feet away from it you know um, I could see it in my peripheral and I could see the darkness it was emanating and you know so I looked back at it and it's gone so I look away and I can see it and I look back at it and it's gone and I had to do this for I don't know <laughs> a half a dozen to a dozen times trying to figure out what exactly was going on with my vision and uh, then I just I just started staring directly into the darkness, and um, I heard this clicking sound. Um, it wasn't a snapping. It, it was like a. I've described it as a really heavy duty uh, fishing reel, you know, one of those bait casters with a nice loud uh, reel sound. If you were to grab the fishing line and just slowly pull it against the drag, that click, click, click sound the drag would make, that's what I was hearing. It, it sounded like the drag of a fishing reel. And it was it was just like it had this, this weird rhythmic pattern to it. And it was definitely coming from what I was staring at, even though what I was staring at, I couldn't really see if I stared at it. Um, so I, I was in this like trance of what am I hearing, what am I seeing, and uh, my cigarette had burned down and it burned my finger. And uh, of course it, it kind of broke the trance I was in and I looked down and I shook my hand real quick and you know said ouch and I looked back up and that didn't even take but a split second you know and when I looked back up the darkness had had shifted away from the tree slightly 
and it like it so if if you're looking at a shadow right and that shadow is let's say coming through a door and you're looking at the shadow on the floor coming through a door and and that shadow walks towards the light and goes past the light you know it'll get it, it changes form and then it disappears you know what I mean um, that's what this thing <laughs> this thing moved like a shadow that was retreating towards the light is the best way I can describe it because the darkness moved away from the tree and then like the center of darkness seemed to like swirl and envelope and drop and then it went through the trees like away from me um, it didn't make a sound it didn't move a branch but the darkness sped away and um, <clears throat> upon seeing that everything like hit me like where I was what I just saw um, how far away anyone else is uh, that and now it's almost nighttime uh, the sun's completely down and the the uh, the part of the sky that's lit up after sunset is slowly fading away uh, more and more of the sky is turning purple and more and more stars are, are slowly blinking in to the night um, so uh, I I just took off running I ran non-stop out that path across the campground all the way up the gravel road uh, to where the trucks are and you know when I got to where I could start seeing the trucks and everybody up there I, I was yelling like hey 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 and I got to them and I was all winded and I tried telling them I saw something you know and you know the guys at the group were like come on let's go and I was like all right let's go and then you know they'd get across the the gate and it was like they talked themselves out of it uh, they made it seem like yeah whatever there's nothing down there anyway I'm not gonna waste my time um, but uh, on that bridge there's an urban legend carved in there over generations of the youth coming to the coming to that area and hanging out and that urban legend is one of what they call devil wolf um, the devil wolf and I mean I've looked it up online and everything um, there's nothing online about it um, however one of our friends uh, his mom when well when when my friend told his mom what I had seen she had a conversation with me when I had come over her and uh, this dude's dad both back in like the 70s something happened down there um, with these kids and I mean she remembers the the urban legend devil wolf and like whatever happened with these kids it wasn't long afterwards that uh, there was this extreme storm that wound up ripping that bridge up um, and sending most of it downstream and they actually had to restore it um, but it was all kind of wrapped around this big event which you can't find nothing about now you can find stuff about the bridge in the in the storm but you can't find nothing about the kids and this this devil wolf uh, but yeah so and <clears throat> so we went back down the next day like none of them would go down that night but we went back we went back down the next day because I wanted to know how big what I was looking at was and uh, like my brother's six foot five you know and I had him go we walked down there and he went and stood by the tree that I know whatever it was I was looking at was standing by and um, the silhouette of the figure I was looking at 
had to be eight to ten foot tall because um, with my brother standing over there and he's six foot five um, he would have been like a child next to whatever this silhouette was uh, so there you go